Thank you. So uh, this presentation is made uh, after uh, uh, Dr. Muriel Manamblan experience. She's a fantastic uh, doctor. She's an emergency uh, medicine doctor and also osteopath. And she has a, a great experience of uh, a chronic Lyme disease or PTSDS or SPPT. So uh, I just look to see better my slides, okay. Uh, we studied uh, 95 patients with uh, this chronic syndrome. Uh, they were all followed by the same physician. Uh, she, she doesn't speak English, that's why she asked me to present for her, but uh, uh, we a two year follow up. And uh, the microbial diagnosis were made uh, with serologies and also with PCRs uh, performed in the, at, at the end, uh, at Nucleus Lab uh, with the Prof. Michael Frank, who is a vet uh, doctor, as I said yesterday. And there was a clinical uh, questionnaire was filled by the physician during consultation. And here you have a long list of uh, signs and symptoms. Uh, here with a, a severity score that was made from no sign to five uh, maximum intensity. You see a, a very large range of uh, different signs and symptoms. Uh, we know them very well because our patients complain of a lot of them every day. Uh, as she's osteopathic, in the, in the criteria, she, she spoke about intervertebral dysfunction. I, I was not, uh, I do not know that very well. So she told me that in osteopathic medicine, it's a musculoskeletal disturbance that can be detected with manual palpation and corrected with manipulation. I give its precision because it was not my, my uh, current practice. Uh, other items were only noted as present or absent. Uh, your nail mycosis, chronic rhinitis, sinusitis, thrombocytopenia, cardiovascular events, cancer, ethereal migraines, red strayer, demographism, and cutaneous erythema, night sweats. So the serologies were done for uh, Babesia, Candida, Ernicia, Rickettsia, Bartonella, Coxiella, Francisella, Mycoplasma pneumonia, and Chlamydia pneumonia. And PCRs were realized, as I showed yesterday, for a, a wide spectrum of uh, microorganisms in four matrices, venous blood, capillary blood, urine, and saliva. So in this population, the mean age was 46 years from seven to 75. Uh, the mean duration of the disease was eight years from one to 35. Mean duration of signs and symptoms per patient, uh, 22 signs and symptoms, uh, and the mean number of microorganisms per patient, 2.8. So it's not only Borrelia. Uh, the most frequent crypto infection no, no, no. Identi identified uh, Babesia was the first one, followed by Thalaria, then uh, that was the parasites. For uh, fungus, it was Candida, and then uh, among bacteria, Mycoplasma was found in a, a great amount of patients, uh, followed by Borrelia, uh, Rickettsia, Bartonella, and Ehrlichia. Uh, here you have the less frequent uh, infection identified, chlamydia in 6% of the cases, followed by coxella, anaplasma, francisella, neuralicia, mycorrhizis, and a very few uh, uh, number uh, of uh, viral infections identified. So the mean scores, uh, uh, you see that asthenia was uh, near, nearly 5, 4.5 score in intensity, and then uh, you have the score for all the other uh, signs and symptoms. Uh, Intervertebral dysfunction, there were two degrees according to osteopathy. Uh, so for the first degree, it was a high grade, and uh, then uh, lower, but the muscular, muscular pain, it was 4.2 out of five, joint pain, 4.1. So it was important, and then, uh, oh sorry, it was in French, uh, uh, GI disturbances, uh, dyspnea, intervertebral dysfunction, palpitation. Uh, here you have the mean score for the other sign or symptoms, and cephalalgia were 
a rather important and a concentration problems, sadness, depression, vertigo, uh, and so on. And uh, as you can see, uh, night sweats were present in many, uh, nearly half of the patients, like nail mycosis, thrombocytopenia was frequent, uh, even chronic rhinitis, sinusitis. Uh, red striae, we saw yesterday that it uh, often linked to Bartonella, but 18% uh, of the patients, cardiovascular events, eryth erythema migrants was not very frequent, only 7% and 7% had cancer. So we tried to look at a correlation of cl clinical pattern uh, with the microorganism, the age of the patient or the duration of the syndrome. Uh, so a statistical analysis was made by linear least square regression method and the threshold of significance uh, was defined as uh, less than uh, 0.01 because as all these symptoms are not very specific, uh, we prefer to put a, a harder threshold than the usual uh, 0.05. Uh, here you have the link, statistical link between uh, the intensity and number of signs and symptoms and the correlation with co-infections and the duration of the, the, of the disease. Uh, First, you see the number of identified microorganisms, all the co-infections. Uh, the higher the number, it's correlated with the intensity of signs and symptoms. It's very significant. And with the number of signs and symptoms, it's also significant. Uh, for the duration of the syndrome, uh, it's correlated with the intensity of signs and symptoms and with the number of signs and symptoms. Uh, now, if we uh, look at the correlation with the duration of the syndrome with specific, uh, um, mic sorry, not microorganism here, but also with the uh, symptoms, you can see uh, that chills is significant, but also Babesia is linked statistically with chills. Hearing impairment, uh, the duration is uh, uh, the longer the duration of the syndromes the higher the risk to have hearing impairment, and also hearing impairment is correlated with early infections. A neuropathic pain, the longer the disease, the higher the risk, and neuropathic pain is correlated with borrelia infection. And for the intervertebral dysfunction of the second degree, the, the worse situation, it is correlated with the duration of the syndrome. And theralia also infection is correlated with intervertebral dysfunction. And now, uh, correlation with the duration of the syndromes alone, uh, without any more correlation with uh, different uh, microorganisms, uh, palpitations, sleeping disorders, and weight variations are correlated with the duration of the syndrome. Uh, now, if we look at the age uh, for abdominal pain, the younger the patients, the higher the pain. And for intervertebral dysfunction of the first degree, the older the patients, the more frequent uh, the dysfunction. If we look now at correlation between uh, thermic disorders and some microorganisms, fever is uh, correlated uh, with a Babesia infection. Chills also with Babesia, and also we saw previously it's correlated with the duration of the syndrome. Uh, alternating hot cold feeling it's correlated with Babesia, with Theralia, but Theralia and Borrelia, it's not uh, significant with our threshold of 0.01, but it could be statistically, statistically significant with a 0.05, but maybe with a higher population, it could be statistically significant. And night sweats, it was correlated with uh, Babesia and Theralia. Uh, here, Oh, sorry, I can't see all the slides. Oh, sorry. Uh, no? Okay, for Babesia, uh, Babesia is correlated statistically with fever, with chills, alternating hot cold feeling, night sweats, dyspnea and cough, uh, vertigo, also with mycoplasma, episodes of anger, also with borrelia, fasciculations, 
cephalalgia, also with borrelia and thrombocytopenia. If we look at mycoplasma, uh, it's linked statistically with vertigo as Babesia. Uh, borrelia, it's linked, of course, with erythema migrans, but it was not so frequent in this series, uh, with alternating hot and cold feeling, but also uh, Babesia and maybe Theralia, but Theralia is not highly significant. Uh, cephalalgia, also with Babesia. Uh, episodes of anger also with Babesia. Visual disorders, it was not significant in this series, but you see it's 0 0.02, so it, maybe there is a link. And neuropathic pain, uh, it was a, a highly stati stat stat uh, statistically significant as a duration of the syndrome. Erlichia was uh, uh, linked with hearing impairment also. There was a, a link that we saw previously with the duration of the syndrome. For Theraria, uh, because it's the first time we, we are looking uh, in humans in, uh, in Theraria infections, uh, it's linked with night sweats, like Babesia. Uh, alternating hot and cold feeling, it was not uh, very significant, 0.03, but not far from being significant. Uh, it was also uh, Babesia and Borrelia, uh, where uh, Babesia was linked also with this feeling of hot, cold feeling. Borrelia, it was not highly significant. Uh, Intervertebral dysfunction of the second degree was linked uh, with Theralia infection. I was speaking about episode of sadness, depression. It was uh, statistically uh, linked to Theralia infection, capillary microsaccharation disorders also. For Bartonella, it was uh, highly linked uh, with red striae, demographism, cutaneous erythema, and also uh, with chronic sinusitis. And for Candida, uh, it was linked with craving for food. So in conclusion, uh, serologies uh, are of interest for some microorganisms, and uh, PCRs uh, are interesting if we look at a wide range of microorganisms. If we take samples from several matrices, as I show, showed yesterday, uh, so maybe we will have to confirm that in uh, larger studies from uh, different teams and uh, countries, but uh, an accurate microbial diagnosis may allow correlation with some uh, signs and uh, symptoms. Uh, thank you.